Good morning and Happy New Year. We are happy to welcome our parishioners and guests to St. Joseph's as we celebrate the Solemnity of Mary, the Holy Mother of God, and to welcome in the New Year. Sunday, January 16th, will be the last Sunday that we will have Mass in the Church. Sunday Masses will be held in the Parish Center starting Sunday, January 23rd, and daily Masses starting Monday, January 17th, will be held in the Mother Teresa Hall with the church cut off with scaffolding. People are needed to help remove the pews out of the church after the noon mass on Sunday, January 16th. Father Worth is a celebrant for this mass, assisted by Deacon Ken. I am Jeannie Hammond, your lector. Let us prepare our hearts to celebrate Holy Mass. Please join us in singing our opening hymn, number 64 in your missile, Angels We Have Heard on High, number 64 in your missile. Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Welcome this morning. I thank you for coming uh, on this, the feast day of Mary, Mother of God, uh, especially given the, the sub-zero temperatures, the wind chill warning, and the meteorologist telling you to stay home. So thank you for coming. Brothers and sisters, our Mass this morning is offered for the repose of the soul of Clarence Labor. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, 
all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. of her, through whom we were found worthy to receive the author of life, our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Numbers. The Lord said to Moses, Speak to Aaron and his sons and tell them, This is how you shall bless the Israelites. Say to them, The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord let his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you kindly and give you peace. So shall they invoke my name upon the Israelites and I will bless them. The word of the Lord. May God bless us in his mercy. May God bless us in his mercy. Yeah. 
St. Paul to the Galatians. Brothers and sisters, when the fullness of time had come, God sent his Son, born of a woman, born under the law, to ransom those under the law so that we might receive adoption as sons. As proof that you are sons, God sent the Spirit of his Son into our hearts, crying out, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then also an heir through God. The word of the Lord. From the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, o Lord. The shepherds went in haste to Bethlehem and found Mary and Joseph and the infant lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known the message that had been told them about this child. All who heard it were amazed by what had, had been told them by the shepherds. And Mary kept all these things reflecting on them in her heart. Then the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, just as it had been told to them. When eight days were completed for his circumcision, he was named Jesus, the name given him by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. The Gospel of the Lord. Happy New Year. And we do. We celebrate this, uh, this wonderful celebration, a, a, a new year, uh, the new year of the Lord, 2022. Uh, and so we, we celebrate this. But it kind of raises a question. Why do Catholics go to church on New Year's Day? Well, why, what is, what's going on here? And, you know, in, in most years, not, not this year in particular, but most years it's even obligatory. I think I did the math. Uh, uh, five divided by seven is roughly 70 percent. Uh, so about 70 percent of the time this is an obligatory day, not just a day that Catholics like to come to Mass, it's a day we're supposed to come to Mass normally. Uh, and so here we have this, this, this New Year's Day in which Catholics come to church. Now is this just another example uh, of Catholics taking a secular celebration and, and making it ours? We do that by the way. 
Uh, we, we claim all things for Christ. So sometimes we'll take a, a secular celebration and say, uh, we're going we're gonna to bring Christ into it. It's what we do. But is that what's going on here today? Do we just say, well, the, 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 the world celebrates New Year's Day, so we should celebrate something today? No, actually. Actually, today's feast day, the fact that t- this feast day falls today, has nothing to do with January 1st. It actually has to do with something we heard in our gospel today. If you notice, our gospel today was a Christmas gospel, right? It would have been the very same gospel that, was, that, could have been, that would have been read at the Mass at dawn on Christmas morning. Uh, except it's got an addition. It's a little extra chunk. So we heard the regular part that we were familiar with, the Christmas story, right? The shepherds, they come, uh, they, see, they, they see the child, they tell, everything, they tell everybody about the child, what they heard from the angels, and then they go home rejoicing. And then we get this little addition. When eight days were completed for his circumcision, he was named Jesus, the name given him by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. Well, today is eight days since Christmas. You ever noticed uh, there's exactly eight days between Christmas and New Year's? Now, you have to count like an ancient to get there, which means ancients, they count the, the first day and the day that it is. So Christmas was Saturday, right? Saturday. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. That's seven days, right? And then Saturday again, eight days. So in the Jewish mindset with the ancient way of counting, a week was seven days. But when you're counting the day, be, the, 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 the first day of the week and then counting that day again, it's eight days, right? So uh, it's an ancient celebration of the, of the Jewish faith to celebrate a feast for eight days. Uh, and so too in our Catholic faith, we call it an octave. Uh, an eight-day celebration, a whole week celebration. Uh, and indeed, the old, uh, and then of course also part of the Jewish tradition, is that a child would be, a, a male child would be circumcised and named on the eighth day since birth. Uh, so for the first eight days of this child's life, it was just baby. Uh, but then the circumcision would happen and he would be, give, he would be given his name, which uh, was given to him by Mary and Joseph, both of whom received that name given to them by a message from, the, from an angel. In fact, the old, day of this fe- the old name of this feast day was the circumcision of Jesus. So, on the one hand, this feast day has nothing to do with New Year's. But on the other hand, I think it's kind of fitting. You know, what did they, what did they sing in Times Square at midnight? Uh, well, it would be 11 p.m. for us in Central Time, right? What did they sing after the ball dropped? Should old acquaintance be for God and never brought to mind. Ooh, tough high note. Um, uh, it's, uh, we had, you know, they sing that song, and I might be misunderstanding it because it's, it's kind of this mixture of old Scottish English that, that is only half translated for us. Uh, but my impression of that song is an idea that it's, let's let go of the past. Let go of the past. It's a new year. We're going to have a fresh start. And indeed, we, we treat the new year a lot like that, right? The new year is a fresh start, right? And we make New Year's resolutions, right? What are New Year's resolutions other than maybe looking back at 2021 and saying, you know, here's a way I could have improved 2021. Now it's 2022. I'm going to make a resolution. I'm going to resolve to do this, to build up this new habit. On a side note, New Year's resolutions aren't particularly Christian or Catholic, but they're very fitting as our Catholic life is about building up the virtues, the habits of holiness. So if you've got your New Year's resolutions, I only encourage you. Uh, But right, we treat it that way, right? This is a new year, and it's a fresh start, and I'm going to start it well. I want to suggest that Christmas is humanity's new year. Christmas is humanity's fresh start. Think about how humanity started, right? Our very first parents, Adam and Eve, we know the story. There's a tree, only one tree, don't eat of it. What do they do? Just like little children, don't do it. Oh, they go and do it, right? They rebelled against God. We call it the original sin. And that original sin is a stain on humanity from its beginning. And so is every sin that came afterwards, right? From Cain murdering his brother Abel all the way down the generations. Every sin that has been a lack of love towards God or a lack of love towards neighbor. That's a stain on humanity. 
but that changes at Christmas. St. Paul in our second reading tells us, When the fullness of time had come, God sent his Son, born of a woman. The fullness of time. So this was a very deliberately chosen time. The time of Jesus' birth at Bethlehem was very deliberately chosen by God. What was his rationale? I don't know. We'll have to wait till we get to heaven and ask him, why that time? Why that time in the history of Israel? Why that time in the history of the Roman Empire, in the history of humanity? Well, whatever it was, it was the fullness of time. It was the time of fulfillment. Uh, And in a sense, maybe you could say it was a time for a new start, a fresh start. St. Paul goes on to say, he speaks of that, uh, that God sent his son to ransom us so that we might receive adoption and to no longer be a slave, but a son. So we have these words, right? We got ransom, right? That's a word of rescue, pain for a rescue, right? A rescue from something. And then we have adoption. So ransom on the one hand, now adoption. We have slavery on one hand, and now being sons and daughters of God on the other. There's a transition here. There's the family of Adam, the family that was, that was that stained by sin, and there's the family of God. There's the slavery, the slavery of the past, slavery to sin, slavery to death, slavery to the past. And now there's the fresh start. This is, there's a transition here. And St. Paul, in, in another letter of his, another one of his letters, says Christ is the new Adam. He's humanity's fresh start. So our goal in the Christian life is to make that transition, to transition from the stained family of Adam to the fresh start in the family of Jesus Christ, to, be, to, get, to be, move on from the old Adam and let that be in the past and to have the fresh start with the new Adam. And we did this. We did this when we were baptized. When we were baptized, we switched allegiances. We were, from, we were born into the family of Adam. We were reborn into the family of Jesus Christ. But of course, we know there's that, still that part of our nature that, that draws us back to the sin, back to the sin of Adam, back to uh, lack of love of, of God and love of neighbor. Uh, and so we have to kind of tug a war against that, combat against that. And we keep wanting to, we, we fight against that. And we also not just fight against the old Adam, but we want to go to the new Adam. We want to go to Christ. And we do that every time we go to confession, every time we come to this altar and receive Holy Communion, every time we read from the Scriptures, every time we come to God in prayer, and every time we do works of charity, acts of love for our brothers and sisters on earth. We are aligning ourselves with the new family, the new Adam, the family of God. So we have all these tools to bring us into that. But there's one other special way that we have that brings us to the new Adam. And that I come now come back around to the new title of this feast, the Feast of Mary, Mother of God, where we celebrate essentially a Christmas mystery from the perspective of Mary, who gave birth to Jesus, Jesus who himself is God. That's why we give her that title, Mother of God. And Mary, she was there. Uh, our, our, our fathers of the church call, sometimes call Mary the new Eve. The original Eve, while being the mother of all of us by, in, by nature, she's also the one that brought death to us. Every child born to Eve and born of her descendants will eventually die. Mary gave birth to eternal life, life himself, right? Jesus Christ, the Son of God, so full of life that death could not contain him. We'll come back to that at Easter time and celebrate that mystery. But Mary gave birth to life himself. She gave birth to the new Adam. She gave birth to our fresh start. And she was with him the whole way. She was there at Bethlehem when he was, when he was born. She was with him through the hidden life in Nazareth. She was with him in his public life when he was in Cana, when he was in Galilee, when he was uh, in Jerusalem. And she was there at the foot of the cross when he died on Calvary. Mary is the one who brought Jesus to us, who brought us our fresh start. She can also today bring us now to Jesus. So on this New Year's Day, and on this uh, Christmas feast day, the eighth eighth day of Christmas, uh, let us let go of the stained and sinful past of Adam 
and let us embrace the new Adam, our, embrace our fresh start in Jesus Christ through the help of Mary, the mother of God. Let us now profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. Encouraged by the birth of, of Jesus through the Blessed Virgin Mary, we confidently bring our prayers to God our Father. As we begin this year of the Lord 2022, may the church continue to witness to Jesus Christ, born of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our For peace on earth, as the angels sang on Christmas Day, and that regions of the world that currently experience war, discrimination, and other types of violence may enjoy the peace of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For mothers of children, both born and not yet born, who struggle, may they be given the help and support they need. Let us pray to the Lord. For all our parishioners, as we enter the new year, may we be guided by Mary, the mother of God, and St. Joseph, her spouse and our patron. Let us pray to the Lord. For our parish of St. Joseph's and for the financial support we need to repaint and recarpet our church in January, let us pray to the Lord. For all who have died in our parish, and for Clarence Labor, for whom this holy mass is being offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord Almighty God, who sent your Son to be born of a woman, Mary, the mother of God, hear and answer the prayers we bring before you. We ask them in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Please join us in singing our offertory hymn, Immaculate Mary, number 126 in your missal. <laughs>
brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who in your kindness begin all good things and bring them to fulfillment, grant to us who find joy in the solemnity of the Most Holy Mother of God that just as we glory in the beginnings of your grace, so one day we may rejoice in its completion through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, and to praise, bless, and glorify your name on the solemnity of the motherhood of the blessed ever-Virgin Mary. For by the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit, she conceived your only begotten Son, and without losing the glory of virginity, brought forth into the world the eternal light, Je Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore, and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven, and the blessed seraphim, worship together with exaltation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory.
To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and, our, and John, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, and on the Catholic and Apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred day on which Blessed Mary, the Immaculate Virgin, brought forth the Savior for this world, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord, Jesus Christ, and Blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help through Christ our Lord. Amen. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, as Almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty 
from the gifts you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you are pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing through Christ our Lord. Amen. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace, through Christ our Lord. Amen. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon, through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who we'll live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Please join us in singing number 284 in your hymnal, Holy is His Name, number 284.
Please join us in singing Hail Mary, number 285 in your hymnal. Let us pray. We have received this heavenly sacrament with joy, O Lord. Grant, we pray, that it may lead us to eternal life. For we rejoice to proclaim the blessed ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of your Son and Mother of the Church, through Christ our Lord. I want to thank you again for coming on this, uh, this cold and frigid New Year's Day to celebrate this solemnity of Mary, Mother of God. And as, our, as part of our final blessing, our final blessing is a blessing at the beginning of the year. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May God, the source and origin of all blessing, grant you grace, pour out his blessing in abundance, and keep you safe from harm throughout the year. May he give you integrity in the faith, endurance and hope, and perseverance and charity with holy patience to the end. May he order your days and your deeds in his peace, grant your prayers in this and in every place, and lead you happily to eternal life. And may the blessing of Almighty God the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Thanks be to God. Please join us in singing our closing hymn, number 125 in your missal, Hail Holy Queen, number 125.